Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Canna Campbell. I really hope that you're enjoying my YouTube channel. Please know that it is back and I'm publishing a fresh video for you every Thursday afternoon. And at your request, I'm making sure there's a fair and even balance between my financial content where I educate you, inspire you and empower you. And of course, my fun lifestyle content, which involves motherhood, life hack efficiency, and of course, capsule wardrobe fashion and a little bit of beauty along the way. So please make sure you are subscribed and that notification bell is switched on. And as always, please make sure you let me know what type of videos you want on this channel and I promise to make them for you. All right, so today's video is a follow up from last week's video. Last week, I published a really short but sweet video sharing with you the top three things that I ever did for myself financially. The things that I'm so glad and so relieved that I did because they have paid off and helped me get to where I am today financially. They've given great efficiency in my life. They've given me great comfort and peace of mind. And they've really helped make sure that I'm going places and that my money is working for me. So if you haven't watched that video yet, stop this one, go watch it, and then come back to this one because this one is the flip of it. I'm going to share with you my three biggest financial regrets. Now, I'm not sharing this with you to be doom and gloom, but instead actually to educate you and empower you so that you don't make the same mistakes that I made. From seeing, seeing and hearing and understanding what I did wrong and I really kicked myself and shot myself in the foot, you now know or you will know after watching this video what not to do or if you see a sign or a warning, you know to go in the opposite direction or what to do to get around it. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the first biggest regret and this is kind of embarrassing to share with you, but I wasted so much money in my late teens and early 20s on fads and fashions and just crap, really. Stuff that I can't even show you today because it's literally, sadly, landfill. I would go and buy so much fast fashion because it was cheap and there was lots of it. I would blow money on just silly things that were just in fashion and trending at the time. I look at photographs of myself and I'm like, oh, yuck, I'm so embarrassed. What was I thinking? What a huge, huge, huge waste of money and resources and so damaging to the planet. I really regret not taking some time for myself and learning about a capital wardrobe, learning about signature style, learning about quality over quantity, learning about where my value system is and what type of style and tastes and fabrics and textures and colors make me feel happy so that I wouldn't have wasted so much money on just the textile industry, basically. Now, the flip side of this is I actually wish I had spent less money on crap and more money on experiences. You see, a lot of my girlfriends, when I was in my late teens, and early 20s, they went backpacking around Europe. They went and lived in all these amazing different countries around the world and had these incredibly culturally rich experiences. Now, whilst I did travel, I didn't travel as much as they did and I didn't go to as many places as they did. And I really, really regret that. I wish I had spent more money on travel, on adventures, on experiences. And yes, I will admit I can probably go to those places today and there's nothing stopping me and I could probably even go with a bit more comfort and luxury in my life because it wouldn't have doesn't impact my financial affairs as much as what it would be when I was in my like late teens, early 20s. There are some of the places that are now longer, no longer available for me to go. They're not safe anymore or, you know, they've got limited um, restrictions around tourism. So I, I really regret that. Also, I now have three young kids. So for me to travel, the five of us, it's a lot more expensive than it would have been for me as a single you know, person in their early 20s. So I really regret that. However, I am making a conscious effort to make sure I include more experiences, more adventures, more journeys for my life going forward. So it's not, I guess, all doom and gloom and regret here. But nevertheless, you can learn from my mistakes. My second biggest regret is having a knee jerk, emotional, irrational reaction to a very natural market pullback. I started investing, I think in my around about 19 and I started to make my more first, more serious, like high growth investment. I think it was around about 20. 
and there was a fairly dramatic market pullback. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head what was going on, but it was a fairly serious economic activity and very volatile at the time. And my portfolio dropped around about, I think, 20% or so. But that was in alignment to everything else that was going on in the world. And I panicked. I didn't educate myself. I was looking at the headlines on the media and I made the regretful decision to sell everything, which meant I crystallized a loss. I paid a whole pile of brokerage and I cut off a potentially a really good quality diversified asset. Now, if I had educated myself, I would have known to sit on my hands, focus on my goals, focus on what I could control, what I was trying to achieve, and maybe even see this as potentially a buying opportunity to pick up the same quality asset at a discount now, but I didn't. I let my emotions take over and I really regret that. It was actually a really good buying opportunity. So when you're experiencing market volatility or you know, global economic events or even just local economic events and it's impacting your portfolio, learn to make sure you take a moment to educate yourself. Look at what's going on, looking if it's just a standout event or something you do need to make some alterations and changes to your portfolio, such as increasing the level of diversification. Mm -hmm but make sure you take a rational, informed, calm reaction, unlike myself at the time. And know that market pullbacks are perfectly natural and normal. And you may even discover in doing this that there is actually, as I said, a great opportunity behind this. So, so another great thing to learn from my own mistake. And then the third biggest financial regret in my life. And this is one that really irks me and annoys me and I just wish I had figured this out earlier in life, and that is my financial goals in my early 20s. And this is gonna sound such a surprise because I'm someone who's very motivated and ambitious, but when I look back at my early 20s, I was so focused and obsessed with the gross figure or the, the capital growth of my portfolio. If I think about my previous goals back then, they were to save up X amount of dollars, which was fine, but to it was all my investment goals were have an investment portfolio worth X dollars and to have a gross figure worth X. That is perfectly fine and there's nothing too much wrong with that, but I completely missed the very important and highly valuable concept of passive income. And this is where I think a lot of the FIRE community can sometimes fall into this dangerous trap. So at the end of the day, having a portfolio worth a million dollars, $10 million or $100,000 is great. But if that portfolio is not paying you any passive income, how is that working for you and your financial goals? Because for you to then really be financially free, that requires you to start selling down the asset and slowly eating into that capital. However, when you have a passive income and you have a passive income goals, which I didn't have at the time, and you have that passive income, you can learn to live off that passive income and ideally never actually eat into that capital. So that passive income ideally keeps growing over time and you never touch the capital base source. So when I look back and I think, wow, I wanted to have a say $200,000 diversified investment portfolio, that was quite a meaningless goal. It didn't actually really connect with me and connect with my value system and what I really was trying to work out I was standing for financially. Whereas when I learned to flip that and go, all right, my goal is to build up a passive income of say $80,000 a year. It drove so much more motivation, empowerment, energy, connection, dedication, commitment in me because for me, I could start to see actually, this is light at the end of the tunnel. This would mean I don't have to work because I'm living off my passive income stream and it's helping fund my lifestyle. So the thing is what I'm trying to say is don't get caught in the trap or even the, uh, the misleading element of being of making your financial goals so capital growth focused. They're not gonna help you as much as having a passive income goal and a brilliant, powerful passive income goal, which for me, when I set for myself, things really started to shift and break through and move. And that is having a financial goal that was built around earning enough passive income to either cover my lifestyle or to help supplement my lifestyle. So if you're thinking about your own financial goals and you realize you've fallen into this trap, keep those capital growth goals, that's perfectly fine, but really do consider incorporating a passive income goal. I promise you, you won't regret it. You'll end up, I think, 
falling in love with your passive income goal more than your capital growth goal. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think. And if you actually really love these two videos, please make sure you go and check out my podcast on Sugar Mama's Fireplay. Because not only do I talk about these things in more detail, I actually share with you an extra two things that I really regret doing in my financial early days, in my financial youth, you could call it. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next Thursday. Don't forget to make sure you're subscribed and ciao. For now.